You country cornflakes! You country cornflakes! Do you want to spend your entire day playing hide and go seek with a dust bunny? Try X4 Foundation's Snooping Around mission. It will send you across countless systems to find one of these dust bunny looking rare signal sources. Oh look, you found it. But don't get too excited there, sport. This isn't the right signal source, dust bunny. That's right. Here at EOSoft, we want you to spend hours looking for a signal source only for it to be the wrong signal source. It's okay, tiger, don't be so glum. Just means you get to try again, and again, and again. It doesn't matter you have other things you wish to get done. We strive to make sure you are absolutely bogged down with pointless searching. We know this is what you want in a space sim game you spent hard-earned money on, so please, enjoy. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just salty because this mission has bent me over and spanked me. <laughs> I've traveled to countless scale plate stations and just can't find this signal. But it's fine. I'm moving on. I have bigger fish to fry because one thing I did notice while scouring the galaxy was freaking Xenos were invading everywhere. I've been uh, taking my own sweet time doing anything in my current save. I, I've, it's been super casual. I've just been exploring around, trading the odd job here and there. But now I have realized that none of that matters when you literally have Borg cockroaches trying to breach your door to your home system. I really saw the Xenon concentrating on the mid-systems, so with a little bit of detective work I followed the Congo line of life-hating robots to here. They were pushing through all these systems and hitting the weakly defended med area of the map. That is only a couple jumps away from my own territory, so I, I had to concoct a plan before it was too late. Now if you watched my stream the other day, you didn't, you would have seen me deduce a plan of epic proportions. I would fund my war effort by producing space weed. Space weed, all that dang space devil's lightness. <coughs> Just like how the CIA funds the war with the cartels, I shall fund my war with illegal drugs. Well. Technically, the Tlatis allow such products, so good on them, I guess. So after many hours, I finally built myself my space weed, uh, excuse me, pharmaceutical goods station, and uh, started racking in those high profits. And well, this was the outcome. A fleet of, um, well, probably average proportions. It, it only has 47 ships in it. It consists of an extra large sized carrier and a couple of large behemoth attack ships, an assortment of medium sized frigates and different fighters. I spent like only 100 million credits on it. And I know some of you are going to be like 100 million and you'll state it all large eyed and impressed, but in reality, 100 million in this game will barely give you a couple station modules and a kiss. So this fleet was more like a system defense fleet at best, but I knew I had to act quickly. Every moment I wasn't on the offense, the enemy would be pushing deeper and deeper towards my territory. Now, my plan was to push my fleet along the same path the Xenon were invading from, hitting them straight on and pushing them all the way back to their jump gate, giving hopefully the mid system enough of a break to allow them to repair and recoup their losses. So now, the time had finally come. Would I be capable of pushing back the Xenon threat with less than 50 ships? <clears throat> Men and women, we come united for a common cause against an enemy that threatens our very way of life. We do not fight for money. We do not fight for territory. We fight for those back home. The enemy is great, but they lack one thing we have, each other. I too shall join you on the front lines. I too shall stay and fight with you shoulder to shoulder and stem the- <coughs> Holy piss we're going down. Jeez, oh, that was- that was close. Never mind. Screw that. I'm I'm gonna stay here. So, from the safety of my command carrier 
we proceeded. My tactic was to use a group of fighters to enter the warp or the jump gate first and scout out the immediate area around it. And if it was safe, then I would bring in the rest of the forces with my carrier. Now, I knew as I entered Trinity Sanctum 3, the Xenon would be traveling along the space freeway. So I pushed my forces toward it and along it and hoped to intercept any enemies that would be traveling along it. But besides a few random small hostiles, the area was completely empty of enemies. And I soon found out why. The Xenon had a decently sized attack group consisting of class M, N, and P type ships blockading the jump gate. They were occupied attacking some local vessels, so I moved my ships in closer. As I moved in to attack some hostiles on the outskirts of the blockade, the rest of the Xenon forces focused in. The battle was intense, but my forces were able to break through the blockade, destroy their ships, and come out victorious. With this, I regrouped my fleet and began to move towards Heiwa's Twin One. The battle in Trinity Sanctum 3 had cost me one fighter, leaving my fleet with 46 ships. Not that bad, however, with such a small fleet, every ship lost was painful. I half expected there to be another blockade on the other side of the jump gate as I entered He Was Twin One. Because of this, I sent a decent sized group to scout it out, however, they were just met with eerie silence. The system looked unnaturally empty of all hostile forces, so I equipped my fleet towards the jump gate leading towards He Was Twin Two. And just when I had the gate in view, we were ambushed. Out of the darkness of space came multiple waves of Xenon fighters and frigates. They pushed hard from the north and from the east, catching my carrier alone and by itself. However, the Xenon were no match for my forces and for my carrier, and before long my ships were mopping up the stragglers. The ambush had taken its toll and he was twin one. A total of three fighters had been destroyed, leaving my fleet numbers at 43. I pushed into Hiwa's Twin 2, much like I did Hiwa's Twin 1, only this time bringing my two large Argon Behemoth capital ships, Zir and Hermes. And thank goodness I did, because right from the time we arrived, we had contact with the enemy. The Xenon made us fight for every inch forward, but it was partway through the system, I saw it. A Xenon K-Class Destroyer. The destroyer was barreling forward towards my forces. I ordered my fighter squadrons to engage and made sure my capital ships closed the distance to open fire. My fighters were able to overwhelm and distract the Xenon Destroyer. This made it easier for my capital ships to knock down its shields and do massive damage with their batteries. After the destruction of the Xenon Destroyer, my broken and worn ships regrouped and began to head towards the Company Regard jump gate. The final system along my warpath. The system that held the jump gate the Xenon forces were coming from. After the smoke cleared from the battles within He Was Twin 2, my fleet had lost one fighter and had taken a massive blow by losing four gunboats slash frigates, leaving my fleet at a total of 38 ships. We had done it. We made it all this way. We were in the system company regard. My fleet had one final push to do. After my fleet destroyed a strangely small Xenon jump gate defense group, we pushed forward. 
The journey was slow, and it was slowed even further with random strikes from Xenon fighters and frigates from the front and rear. Because of this, my fleet was divided. One group facing frontal, while the other one focused on rear defense. Finally, the Xenon jump gate was in view. I ordered a group of my fighters to probe the nearby Xenon defense platform, but as we neared, the fog of war faded, revealing a massive Xenon fleet consisting of everything from fighters to three massive destroyers. They knew we were coming, and they had been waiting. The second we had been spotted, the Xenon pressed the attack. My fleet was still divided into the two defense groups, and I struggled to quickly get my fleet organized. Before I could consolidate my forces, my attack group in the front was engulfed and surrounded. By some luck, the Xenon destroyers held their positions, allowing my forces to begin whittling down their fighters and frigates. After some time, we were able to destroy enough of their first wave to push through and continue towards the gate. Now, the three destroyers and a handful of small Xenon ships stood in the way. I knew I didn't have the numbers to attack all three destroyers at once, so I had my capital ships and a few squadrons of fighters concentrate on a separated destroyer. I then ordered the rest of my ships to play interference in hopes to draw the fighters and guns on them to let my attack group focus on the destroyer. For a split second, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The other two destroyers were retreating back through the jump gate. With the separated destroyer now surrounded by my forces, it took a little time to finish it off. This was it. This was victory. What little forces I had left began cleaning up the few enemies that were still fighting and I began preparing my ships to leave when something unexpected happened. One of the Xenon destroyers had returned through the gate with a fighter squadron. My capital ships were too close to run, so I ordered them to attack the destroyer in hopes that they could both take out the destroyer. Most of my fighters had been destroyed, but I had sent what few I had left to go and help them. Unfortunately for them, the second Xenon destroyer that had escaped had returned, and Xenon fighters began flooding out of the gate. With it, my capital ships fought bravely and courageously, but unfortunately without fighters to cover for them, my capital ships were overwhelmed by the Xenon forces. My Argon Behemoth Zir was torn to pieces after her engines were destroyed. In a desperate attempt to save my last capital ship, I ordered my carrier into the fray. However, the ship's captain overshot the battle, leaving my last capital ship to its inevitable doom. I took control of the ship. I knew I could try to run, but for what purpose? My goal was to hold the Xenons here. So that was what I was going to do. If I was going to go down, I was going to take as many of them as I could with me. They have all gone. We are all that is left. All that stands to stem such impossible floods. Yet we will not go quietly. Hold no regrets. I know we will go on the wings of battle, protecting those we love. This we have all done and done so willingly. Given the ultimate sacrifice so others may live, we shall soon dine in the great halls for eternity, my crew, my friends, my family.
Okay, I'll take my Emmy now. <laughs> um, in conclusion, honestly, I feel like I would have won that if I had made slightly different choices. So, technically, I think it's still a yes. Although, I lost, I chose to lose, in a sense. I had technically beaten back them, all the, the Xenon, all the, back to their gate, their jump gate, and that was what the goal was. And so, technically, I guess that means that part was true. I just stayed and continued to fight whatever came through. So, I, I guess, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a Pyrrhic type of situation. It's Pyrrhic victory, Pyrrhic defend, their defeat. It's, it's leaning one way or another. So, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. Just, I don't know. I think it's possible. I think. I, I think. It, I had a lot of fun. It was a good time. Thank you for watching. And just remember, love one another and uh, treat each other with respect. Alright, peace.